Here are nursing practice questions from 61 to 70. I hope this helps you in your future NCLEX exam. Which of these clients should the nurse assess first? 1. A client who has shortness of breath from moderate pleural effusion and is waiting for thoracentesis. 2. A client who just had a long leg cast applied and has severe pain despite a dose of morphine. 3. A client with cellulitis who is receiving a first dose of IV antibiotics and has throat tightness. 4. A sickle cell crisis client who has severe bone pain despite a dose of morphine. Correct answer. First level priorities include issues of airway, breathing, cardiac and circulation, and vital signs, respectively. A client receiving the first dose of an antibiotic is at risk for allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis include itching, flushing, hives, wheezing, bronchospasm, swelling of the oral mucosa, and hypotension. This is a potentially fatal complication that requires immediate intervention, option 3. Option 1. This client with a moderate pleural effusion awaiting the corrective procedure would be the last client to be assessed by the nurse. Shortness of breath is an expected symptom of pleural effusion. If signs or symptoms of respiratory distress or hypoxemia occur, this client will increase in priority. Option 2. This client with a new cast experiencing severe pain would be the second client to be assessed. This client is at risk for compartment syndrome and limb loss. Increasing fluid, bleeding, in a confined space or decreasing compartmental capacity, casting, causes neurovascular compromise as the vessels are compressed and unable to deliver oxygen to the tissues. Long bone fractures account for most cases of acute compartment syndrome. Option 4. This client with sickle cell pain would be evaluated third. Although in crisis, the client is not at risk for loss of life or limb. Educational objective. First level priorities include issues of airway, breathing, cardiac and circulation, and vital signs, respectively. Anaphylactic reactions are potentially fatal medical emergencies that must be treated immediately. Compartment syndrome prevents perfusion and can cause tissue death and limb loss. Stable clients awaiting procedures are assessed last. A client with primary hypothyroidism has been taking levothyroxine for a year. Laboratory results today show high levels of TSH. Which statement by the nurse to the client is appropriate? 1. A new prescription will likely be issued for a decreased dose of levothyroxine. 2. Dosages of levothyroxine may need to be increased to improve TSH levels. 3. Levothyroxine should be held and the TSH levels will be reassessed in three months. 4. Start taking your levothyroxine with dietary fiber or calcium to increase its effectiveness. Correct answer. Thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, is released from the pituitary gland to stimulate the thyroid to secrete hormones, T3, T4. When sufficient thyroid hormone is circulating, negative feedback causes a normally functioning pituitary to slow or stop the release of TSH. In primary hypothyroidism, the thyroid is unable to synthesize enough T3 or T4, slowing the metabolic rate. In response to low circulating thyroid hormones, the pituitary continues to release TSH, resulting in high TSH levels. Levothyroxine, Synthroid, a thyroid hormone replacement drug, is commonly used to treat hypothyroidism. Levothyroxine dosing is adjusted to regulate circulating thyroid hormone levels. This creates a euthyroid, normal, state and TSH levels are decreased, option 2. Options 1 and 3, decreasing the dose or discontinuing levothyroxine would lead to increased TSH and worsening hypothyroidism as the amount of circulating thyroid hormone decreases. 
Option 4, levothyroxine should be taken on a consistent morning schedule, at least 30 minutes before a meal. Foods containing certain ingredients, like walnuts, soy products, dietary fiber, calcium, can decrease drug absorption. Educational Objective In primary hypothyroidism, the thyroid does not produce enough hormones, T3, T4, in response to low circulating thyroid hormones. The pituitary continues to release TSH, resulting in high levels of circulating TSH. Levothyroxine is usually started or increased to lead to a euthyroid, normal, state. The nurse is caring for a client who needs an indwelling urinary catheter inserted for urinary retention. Which tasks would be appropriate to delegate to the unlicensed assistive personnel? Select all that apply. 1. Document output from the urinary collection bag. 2. Hold adipose tissue out of the way during catheter insertion. 3. Monitor color of the urine after the nurse has assessed it. 4. Reinforce education about the purpose of the urinary catheter. 5. Secure the catheter to the client's thigh with an anchor. Correct answer. It is within the Unlicensed Assistive Personnel, UAP, scope of practice to document output from a urinary collection bag, option 1. The UAP can assist the nurse during a procedure by helping to position a client or holding part of the client's body, option 2. The UAP may also perform routine tasks, such as securing a catheter to the client's thigh with an anchor device, option 5. Option 3, a licensed practical nurse, LP, may monitor for changes after an initial assessment has been performed by a registered nurse, RN, but this is not within the UAP scope of practice. Option 4, education should be provided by the RN. Reinforcement of education may be performed by the LP, but it is not within the UAP scope of practice. Educational Objective Unlicensed Assistive Personnel, UAP, cannot provide client education, perform assessments, or monitor for assessment changes. UAP should not be delegated tasks outside their scope of practice. While caring for a client in skeletal traction, which tasks can the registered nurse, RN, delegate to experienced unlicensed assistive personnel, UAP, to help prevent immobility hazards? Select all that apply. 1. Assist with active and passive range of motion, ROM exercises. 2. Change bed linens while log rolling the client from side to side. 3. Check the color and temperature of the affected extremity. 4. Remind the client to use the incentive spirometer. 5. Reapply pneumatic compression device after bathing the client. Correct answer. The UAP has the skills and knowledge to perform standard procedures to prevent immobility hazards for a client in traction, like pneumonia pressure ulcers, foot drop, thromboembolism. When providing care for a stable client, the RN can safely delegate these tasks to the UAP. Assist with active and passive ROM exercises after the client has been taught how to perform them by the RN or physical therapist, option 1. Notify the RN of client reports of pain, tingling, or decreased sensation in the affected extremity. Remind the client to use the incentive spirometer after the client has been taught proper use by the RN or respiratory therapist, option 4. Maintain proper use of pneumatic compression devices, option 5. Remind the client to move frequently using the overhead trapeze. Option 2. The UAP changes the linens from the top to the bottom of the bed with assistance. Clients are instructed to lift themselves using the overhead trapeze. This approach maintains immobilization of the injured extremity. Log rolling the client will require multiple staff members, including one person to stabilize weights. Option 3. The RN is responsible for peripheral circulation, neurovascular, and skin assessments. Educational objective, to prevent immobility hazards for a client in skeletal traction.
The RN can delegate the following tasks to the UAP. Assist with active and passive ROM exercises. Notify the RN of client reports of pain, tingling, or decreased sensation in the affected extremity. Remind the client to use the incentive spirometer. Maintain proper use of pneumatic compression devices. The nurse administers subcutaneous insulin Lispro at 0730 to a client as prescribed and the client consumes breakfast 30 minutes later. At what time is the client at highest risk for experiencing insulin-related hypoglycemia? 1. 0830 2. 1100 3. 1330 4. 1500 Correct answer Insulin is produced and excreted by the pancreas into the bloodstream to move glucose into cells. Clients with diabetes mellitus are unable to produce sufficient insulin, type 1, and or are unable to properly use insulin due to insulin resistance of the cells, LA, type 2. Clients are often prescribed combination therapy of long-acting insulin, like Detamir, Glargine, Degladec, to help maintain consistent blood glucose levels and supplemental rapid or short-acting insulin to regulate blood glucose levels with food intake. Peak effect indicates the time when a medication will reach maximum effectiveness. Understanding peak effect for each type of insulin helps to predict when the client will have the lowest blood glucose level and highest risk for insulin-related hypoglycemia. Rapid-acting insulins, Lispro, reach peak effect 1 to 3 hours after subcutaneous administration. A client who received Lispro at 0730 has highest risk for hypoglycemia from 0830-1030, option 1. Option 2, short-acting insulins, regular, reach peak effect 1.5 to 5 hours after administration, peak effect from 0900-1230 if administered at 0730. Options 3 and 4, intermediate acting insulins, NPH, reach peak effect 4 to 12 hours after administration, peak effect from 1130 to 1930 if administered at 0730. Long acting insulins can be effective for 24 hours or more, and often do not have a peak effect time. Educational objective. Rapid acting insulins are often administered to clients with diabetes mellitus to regulate blood glucose levels with food intake. Clients are at the greatest risk for insulin-related hypoglycemia during the time of peak effect, 1 to 3 hours after administration for rapid-acting insulins. The nurse receives report on four clients. Which client should be seen first? 1. Client with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis experiencing increased dysarthria. 2. Client with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease reporting increasing leg edema. 3. Client with strep throat and fever of 102F, 38.9C, on antibiotics for 12 hours. 4. Client with urolithiasis reporting wave-like flank pain and nausea. Correct answer. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS is characterized by the progressive loss of motor neurons in the brainstem and spinal cord. Clients have spasticity, muscle weakness, and atrophy. Neurons involved in swallowing and respiratory function are eventually impaired, leading to aspiration, respiratory failure, and death. Care of clients with ALS focuses on maintaining respiratory function, adequate nutrition, and quality of life. There is no cure, and death usually occurs within five years of diagnosis. The client with ALS and worsening ability to speak, dysarthria, may also have dysphagia and respiratory distress. This client should be seen first, option 1. Option 2. The client with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and peripheral edema may have core pulmonale, or right-sided heart failure, from vasoconstriction of the pulmonary vessels. Core pulmonale is treated with long-term, low-flow oxygen, bronchodilators, and diuretics. This client should be seen second. Right-sided heart failure, peripheral edema, 
is not as dangerous as left-sided heart failure, pulmonary edema. Option 3, fever often occurs with strep throat and may persist for 224 hours after initiation of antibiotics. This client should be seen last and should receive an antipyretic. Option 4, wave-like flank pain is characteristic of urolithiasis, urinary stones. This client needs pain medication and, possibly, further treatment, lithotripsy, and should be seen third. Educational Objective Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis causes progressive loss of motor neurons, resulting in muscle weakness and spasticity. Muscles involved in respiration and swallowing are affected, leading to aspiration and, ultimately, respiratory failure. Treatment focuses on maintaining respiratory function, adequate nutrition, and quality of life. The nurse is teaching an adolescent client about newly prescribed alprazolam and sertraline. Which of the following statements by the client indicate that the teaching was effective? Select all that apply. 1. Should have no more than one alcoholic beverage a day while taking alprazolam. 2. I should not drive after I take alprazolam. 3. I will contact my healthcare provider if I experience suicidal thoughts. 4. I will immediately stop taking alprazolam if I feel dizzy or lightheaded. 5. I will take sertraline at the onset of a panic attack. Correct answer. Panic disorder is often treated with selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, sertraline, or serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs, venlafaxine, for long-term maintenance. Anxiety may initially worsen because clients with panic disorder are sensitive to these medications. Benzodiazepines are frequently co-prescribed for the first few weeks because they work faster and are more efficacious. Benzodiazepines, lorazepam, alprazolam, are central nervous system, CNS, depressants that potentiate the effect of gamma-aminobutyric acid, GABA, a powerful inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. GABA decreases excitability of neurons to produce a sedative effect. Clients taking alprazolam and sertraline should avoid driving while taking benzodiazepines due to the sedative effect, drowsiness, option 2. Immediately report suicidal thoughts to the healthcare provider because SSRIs can increase the risk for suicide in children and young adults during initial treatment. Option 3. Option 1. Taking benzodiazepines with other CNS depressants, alcohol, opioids, can produce significant respiratory depression and death. Option 4. Benzodiazepines should not be abruptly discontinued, which can precipitate dangerous withdrawal symptoms, seizures. The health care provider should be notified if the client is unable to tolerate adverse effects, dizziness, lightheadedness. Option 5. SSRIs should be taken consistently at scheduled times to prevent future panic attacks. SSRIs do not treat acute symptoms. Educational Objective Clients taking selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRLs, should immediately report suicidal thoughts and take SSRIs consistently at scheduled times. Clients taking benzodiazepines should avoid concurrent use of other central nervous system depressants, driving while taking benzodiazepines, and abrupt discontinuation of benzodiazepines. A laboring client at 35 weeks gestation comes to the labor and delivery unit with preterm rupture of membranes about 18 hours ago. The client's group B streptococcus status is unknown. What intervention is a priority for this client? 1. Administration of prophylactic antibiotics. 2. Assessment of uterine contraction frequency. 3. Collection of a clean catch urine specimen. 4. Vaginal examination to assess cervical dilation. Correct answer. Group B streptococcus, GBS, may be present as part of normal vaginal flora in up to 30% of pregnant clients. 
Although colonization with GBS rarely poses harm to the client, it can be transmitted to the newborn during labor and birth, resulting in serious complications, like neonatal GBS sepsis, pneumonia. Pregnant clients are tested for GBS colonization at 35 to 37 weeks gestation and receive prophylactic antibiotics during labor if results are positive. If GBS status is unknown, antibiotics are typically indicated when membranes have been ruptured for greater than 18 hours, maternal temperature is greater than 100.4 F, 38 C, or gestation is less than 37 weeks, option 1. Option 2. Part of the client's assessment includes evaluation of the uterine contraction pattern. However, the client and newborn are at risk for infection due to prolonged rupture of membranes and unknown GBS status, so antibiotic administration is the priority. Option 3. A urine specimen is often collected to evaluate for proteinuria in clients with elevated blood pressure or to assess for urinary tract infection in symptomatic clients. Urine specimen collection is not the priority for this client. Option 4. Vaginal examinations should be limited in the presence of ruptured membranes. Multiple vaginal examinations in such a client correlate with an increased risk for infection, chorioamnionitis. Educational objective. Group B streptococcus, GBS, infection can be transmitted to the newborn during labor and birth and cause serious complications. Indications for prophylactic antibiotics during labor include maternal GBS positive status or unknown GBS status with fever is greater than or equal to 100.4 F, 38 C, preterm gestation, and or prolonged rupture of membranes. The nurse plans teaching for a client who was newly prescribed levothyroxine sodium after thyroid removal. Which instructions will the nurse include in the teaching plan? Select all that apply. 1. Drowsiness is a common side effect. Taking the dose at bedtime will make this less noticeable. 2. Notify the healthcare provider if you become pregnant as the medication is harmful to the fetus. 3. Notify the healthcare provider if you feel a fluttering or rapid heartbeat. 4. Take the medication with a meal to prevent stomach upset. 5. You will need to take this medication for the rest of your life. Correct answer. Levothyroxine sodium, like levoxyl, levothroid. Synthroid, is used to replace thyroid hormone in clients with hypothyroidism, inadequate thyroid hormone, and for those who have had their thyroid removed. These clients must understand that this medication must be taken for the rest of their lives, option 5. A client's dose is adjusted based on serum TSH levels to prevent too much or too little hormone. Clients must be taught to report signs of excess thyroid hormone such as heart palpitations, tachycardia, weight loss, and insomnia, option 3. Option 1. Clients with hypothyroidism experience lethargy and somnolence. Hormone replacement therapy will increase metabolic activity and alertness. Option 2. This medication is a hormone that is normally present in the body, so it is safe to take during pregnancy. The dose may need to be altered due to the metabolic demands of pregnancy. But the drug will not harm the fetus. Option 4. It is best to take this medication first thing in the morning as it is best absorbed on an empty stomach, one hour before or two hours after a meal. Educational Objective. Clients receiving thyroid hormone replacement therapy, levothyroxine sodium, should understand that treatment is lifelong and be taught the signs of excess hormone, like tachycardia, palpitations, weight loss, insomnia. The medication is best absorbed on an empty stomach and is safe to take during pregnancy. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Next will be videos 71 to 80.